tell me about the resolution that RepRap can can achieve and that Hydraraptor can achieve. Uh, well, Hydraraptor uses uh, threaded rods um, with a, a coarse pitch on them and micro-stepping drivers so it actually gets a resolution on the XY of 0.006 of a millimeter which is six microns. Um, standard RepRap Darwin uses a, a belt drive um, with a 16 tooth pulley which and a two and a half pitch belt which gives 40 millimeters per revolution and with a, a 400 step motor that gives 0.1 millimeter resolution mm -hmm. on the X and the Y. What is the actual extruded thread size there? Um, the st standard uh, it's been about 0.5 millimeter, but uh, I can work down just by using a smaller hole in the nozzle. I can work down to 0.3 of a millimeter. Mm-hmm. 0.3 millimeter. And how does it compare to commercial 3D printers? Um, I think that's similar. I think they're probably on about 0.25. Mm-hmm. So okay. maybe even 0.3. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Come... They have a layer height of about 0.25 of a millimeter. Mm-hmm. And uh, with a 0.3 millimeter filament, I I also have a 0.25 layer height. Mm -hmm. So you need to squash the threads together a bit, and um, to get them to to bond. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, very similar. Chris, tell me, how do you feed the actual feed plastic into the machine so you could do the extrusion? Um, well, with this drive mechanism which is basically a, a, an M5 bolt, a threaded bolt. Mm -hmm. um, and this is exactly the same thing you have on, currently here on the machine yeah. itself, okay? Yeah. Well, that was actually an M5 threaded rod with a, a nut soldered on the end. Uh-huh, and that's the feed plastic going in there. So that rotates in some bearings and drives the plastic down this slippery um, HDPE filament guide, mm -hmm. guides it into the end of the uh, thermal barrier, which in this case is uh, PTFE. Okay, yeah. Okay, Chris, what kind of heads did you put on Hydra Raptor, where Hydra means the many-headed creature? <laughs> and what are you planning to do? Well, so far it's only uh, bi-headed. It's, uh, it's got a milling head and it's got the uh, thermoplastic extruder. Um, the next one will be experimenting with uh, depositing liquid metals um, to do experiments for making conductive tracks. Um, then I'll definitely be looking at a syringe extruder to put down paste of various things like solder paste. For making circuits? Making circuits again and also um, a, a vacuum needle for a pick and place machine that can effectively pick up components and uh, place them on circuit boards. Mm -hmm. So populating circuit boards automatically. Yeah. Um, and then the things that I want to look at in the further distant future are spark erosion for making accurate small metal parts. Mm -hmm. And that's um, a proven technology? Yeah, oh, that's a proven technology and uh, there are websites um, where amateurs have built their own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, spark eroders. Um, so that shouldn't be too difficult to incorporate mm -hmm. the work from the other people have done. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's uh, obviously interesting to play about with lasers, sintering mm -hmm. plastic powders. Um, what about metals? Laser sintering of metals? Yeah, that would be nice to do. Oh, the, the other way of doing it is you can uh, put down metal um, metal mixtures, you know, metal may be mixed with plastic and then um, you can put that in a kiln and, and fire it to make a solid metal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. yeah, that's a plan, that's many, many heads.
Not as exciting as putting Walmart out of business, but it will do for now.